He was a, a United Airlines pilot for most of his career. Uh, he approached me in Atlanta when I was working on a program at CNN. He came and he, he said, I can only stay for a maximum of five hours, gave me the time, showed up where I lived, walked in, sat down at a table. He began giving me a download that began with these words. Linda, you have to understand that not all moving lights in Earth's skies are craft. Many of the lights that are reported are tears in the magnetic membrane between this universe and another. Wow. Never okay. forgotten. That's, that was his first sentence wow. to me. That's pretty amazing. Um, and I, he's really got my attention. And, <laughs> <laughs> and over the next five hours, and I mean, he came, talked, I wrote, and he left. It was just, it was, a, it was absolutely almost surreal. But in all of that discussion, one of the big legacies was that he said, our U.S. government has been actively trying to counteract places, natural places in the United States and the Earth where magnetic fields collapse as if there's something between the Earth the dynamo of the earth, whatever is happening geomorphologically and out in the atmosphere and the magnetosphere, something happens in this planet where magnetic fields that are normally protective will collapse. I don't know for how long. But at those places that they collapse, this is something Lieutenant Colonel Philip J. Corso had in the day after Roswell in the book. He labels nine places on this planet where magnetic fields will collapse and all kinds of things can come in. That's, and that's what the pilot said, and that was the implication of Jack Parson. Well, in 1982, two years after the broadcast of my documentary, A Strange Harvest, I had a another phone call from somebody who worked in a, an aerospace company. He said, I'm going to be in Denver and I want to come and, and talk to you about something that you need to know. Out of that discussion, he said, I have personally been in an engineering project in Sedona, Arizona, and our task was to build a brick building no access, no windows, and he sketched for me um, something that was shaped sort of like this and had slats. And he said, this is a technology that we have enclosed in this brick building with the express purpose to counteract the natural collapse of magnetic fields in this specific canyon in Sedona. Mm. And he said, we have been doing this at many places, Corso listed nine. Once you begin to think about this and ask other people, one of the things that you begin to be slightly overwhelmed by, if there are advanced intelligences out there behind, let's say, the fast radio bursts, other dimensions, to be here, they have to know how to penetrate dimensions or to move point to point in time by what? Folding space time. And that all of that physics that gives something else with advanced intelligence the ability to move through this universe in a non-Euclidean way and to possibly penetrate from many different dimensions, we're completely, as a human species, left out of that dialogue. I saw a UFO once. I was eight or nine, playing in the street with a friend who's a couple of years older, and we saw a featureless silver disc hovering over the houses. We watched it for a few seconds, and then it shot away incredibly quickly. Even as a kid, I got angry it was ignoring the laws of physics. We ran inside to tell the grown-ups, and they were skeptical. You'd be skeptical too, right? 
I got my own back a few years later, one of those grown-ups told me. Last night, I saw a flying saucer. I was coming out of the pub after a few drinks. I stopped in there, I said, I can explain that sighting. Psychologists have shown we can't trust our brains to tell the truth. It's easy to fool ourselves. I saw something, but what's more likely, that I saw an alien spacecraft or that my brain misinterpreted the data my eyes were giving it? Ever since, though, I've wondered, why don't we see flying saucers flitting around? At the very least, why don't we see life out there in the cosmos? It's a puzzle, and I've discussed it with dozens of experts from different disciplines over the past three decades, and there's no consensus. Frank Drake began searching for alien signals back in 1960. So far, nothing. And with each passing year, this non-observation, this lack of evidence for any alien activity gets more puzzling because we should see them, shouldn't we? And what we're watching on planet Earth, what we've been watching since 1947, is you see huge sections of the financial system and the sort of map of the financial money, and there's nothing on the other side of the balance sheet. There's like this big question mark. And one of the re do you ever feel like the official reality and reality are getting further and further and further apart until your head is like a bungee rope? You know, I walk around saying it just gets weirder. And, and part of it is that, is that you have more and more money and more and more assets going into that thing and driving the whole ecosystem financially, you know, but until you look at that question mark, it's very difficult to do. So the accountants moved over, and it turned out that we were losing $11 million a day in the single-family fund. This was 1989. Can anybody guess in what two regions? It turns out we were making money in eight regions and losing money in, any, in two regions. Can anybody guess what regions those were? Texas and Colorado, exactly. OK, black budget. Read black budget. And so explain what you see on that video. Well, so p people, I think, have conflated the concept of a UFO with whether we're visited by aliens. UFO means unidentified, flying, Ob object, <laughs> OK? This is a highly nonspecific term. Yeah. It is so nonspecific, it admits you don't know what you're looking at. But what's driving that thing if not a space alien? It's unidentified. OK. So, so, so. That's not good enough. Well, so, so the universe brims with mysteries. And so <laughs> just because you don't know what it is you're looking at doesn't mean it's intelligent aliens visiting from another planet. Yes. You just said you don't know what you're looking at. So it's not, you cannot, as a next sentence, say, therefore, it must be anything. Yes, but you know what we're looking at. You stare at the cosmos for a living. I'm not authorized to go beyond this part. <laughs> no, wow. You're in. <laughs> well, so we're in serious. Mind. So no, a couple of things. Just what do you see? What consider you what, what made people interested in this is that it involved the Pentagon and $22 million, or whatever the figure was. Consider, by the way, that's $22 million over five years, and the Pentagon's budget is huge. So how much of the Pentagon budget is that? It's 0.0001% mm -hmm. of the Pentagon budget. So, so, A. B, it's a flying object, and we don't know what it is. I would hope somebody is checking it out. <laughs> I would hope there's a program of our Defense Department to make sure they do not pose a threat. And sure enough, that's what that program was. But it just buzzed away. They didn't know what it was. It, it's, of and course. I, we still don't know. It's a mystery. We still don't know. But hold on. And I'm, I'm cool with that. OK, that's where we differ. <laughs> You're cool <laughs> with letting that, I, letting that Scientists live, live in mystery every day of our lives. There's this, there is the circle of knowledge that we have. And then there is beyond that circle is the unknown. And, and even as the perimeter of that knowledge grows, mm -hmm. OK, that, that, as the area of the knowledge grows, so, to, so does the perimeter of our ignorance, all right? Because it's, it's touching this wider and wider area. OK, I understand. So, but so you, people but, are uncomfortable not knowing, well, not the scientist. I'm fine. We don't know what it is. Keep checking it out. OK, on. but hold call on me, a second. There's another question. Call me when you have dinner I invite from an alien. That's, That's a so different you're conversation. Skeptical. You're skeptical that space aliens have visited Earth. The evidence is so paltry for aliens to visit Earth, I have no further interest. Let other people who care, go ahead. And then when you finally find some aliens, bring them into Times Square. No, no, there are too many weird people. Yeah, <laughs> that's, 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 that's happened. <laughs> that, that, you will not stand out in Times right. Square. And try not to come back during Comic-Con <laughs> when the alien would just blend in. Yes. Find, find, 
Go to the county fair or something <laughs> where, where there's a uniformity of who's there. Here's what Dr. Skidmore and Catherine Austin Fitz have uncovered. Between 1998 and 2015, 21 trillion, with a T, 21 trillion dollars of taxpayer money, your money, has gone missing. This is in addition to the 21 trillion dollars we're in debt in this country. Another 21 trillion is missing. And in particular, it's just in two departments, the Department of Defense and the Department of, of Housing and Urban Development. It's classified under what's called undocumented adjustments. In other words, money that was spent, but they don't, they're not indicating these departments where it was spent or to whom it was given. And that's the crux of this issue. Look, we know this has been a problem since 2001. On September 10th, 2001, the day before the big event, Donald Rumsfeld came out and said, we're missing $2.3 trillion in Department of, at the Department of Defense. The next day, the very office that was looking into where that money had disappeared to, the Office of Naval Intelligence, just happened to be the area that, that sustained the attack at the Pentagon. Okay. So now we got this missing $2.3 trillion from 2001. Well, that's ballooned to $21 trillion. Look, this is how onerous this is. The budget of the entire Department of Defense in 2015 was $565 billion. In 2015 alone, $6.5 trillion was missing, and that was just in the Army. Look, folks, that's 10 times the entire budget for the Department of Defense.